Hey guys, very basic Bible. BJ here bringing you your six minute Bible quick read through the book of Philippians. We want to go through it kind of quickly, and that way you want to start reading, get bogged down. I don't understand it, I'm not sure what it's saying, and then you end up giving up halfway through the book. No, we'll just go through it kind of quickly. Starting off in verse 19, here's my timer for six minutes. NIV, verse 19. I hope in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy to you soon, that I also may cheer when I receive news about you. So maybe he sends Timothy to him, and then Timothy brings him back news. I have no one else like him, like Timothy, who will show genuine concern for your welfare. For everyone looks out for their own interest, not those of Jesus Christ. Remember, just above, he said, Do, not, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather than humility, value others above yourself. Looking not to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of others. Okay, and he said down here, everyone does look out for their own interests, not those of Jesus Christ. But, verse 22, you know that Timothy has proved himself. Ah, because as a son with his father, he, ha he has served with me in the work of the gospel. Okay, so Timothy has proven himself that he actually does look, look out for the interests of others. I hope, therefore, to send him as soon as I see how things go with me. Uh, so I guess Paul still needs help. You know, Paul still wants Timothy to stay there with him. And I am confident in the Lord that I myself will come soon. That's right. Paul said, hey, your prayers are going to be my deliverance back in uh, chapter one. But I think it is necessary to send back to you Epaphroditus. So he's hoping to send Timothy soon, but he thinks it's necessary to send back Epaphroditus. My brother, co-worker, and fellow soldier, who is also your messenger, whom you sent to take care of my needs. Pretty cool. So he's got Timothy and Epaphroditus. For Epaphroditus longs for all of you and is distressed because you heard he was ill. Mm. Indeed, he was ill and almost died. But God had mercy on him, and not on him only, but also on me, to spare me sorrow upon sorrow. Epaphroditus got well and is no longer suffering, and Paul doesn't have to be sorrowful that he died. Therefore, I am all the more eager to send him, so that when you see him again, you may be glad, and I may have less anxiety. Look, we're looking out for the interest of others. Look not to your own self, but to the interests of others. Paul's happy that Epaphroditus didn't die. Paul won't be sorrowful. And that way, the Philippians will be glad. And then Paul will have less anxiety. Brothers helping brothers. Man, that's pretty cool. So then welcome him in the Lord with great joy and honor people like him. Because he almost died for the work of Christ. He risked his life to make up for the help you yourselves could not give me. So the Philippians could not give him help, but Epaphroditus could, and he risked his life. So honor him. Chapter three. Further, my brothers and sisters, rejoice in the Lord. Okay, now we, Paul's just laying it on more. Come, more. Come on, rejoice, you know. It is no trouble for me to write the same things to you again, and it is a safeguard for you. I, I agree. Repetition is key. You know, why do you think we take the Lord's Supper? supper time after time, to remember Christ's death until he comes. Why does Paul write the same things over again? So we may have remembrance of God. Watch out for those dogs. Oh, that's a change. Those evildoers, those mutilators of the flesh. Jewish people said, Gentiles, you need to be circumcised. Hey, Philippians. Hey, you Gentile Philippians. Y'all need to be circumcised in order for Christ to love you. Paul said, Watch out for those dogs, those evildoers, those mutilators of the flesh. Circumcision for a Gentile is merely mutilating the flesh. For it is we who are the circumcision. We who serve God by his spirit, who boast in Christ Jesus, and we put no confidence in our flesh. We're not putting confidence in our circumcision. We have the spirit of Christ. We boast in Christ. Though I myself have reasons for such confidence, 
if someone else thinks they have reason to put confidence in the flesh, I have more. Here we go. If one of these mutilators of the flesh, if one of the Jewish people who say you need to circumcise yourself and become Jewish before Jesus will love you. He's like, guys, I can boast even more than those guys. I was circumcised on the eighth day. I am of the tribe of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin. King Saul came from Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews in regard to the law, a Pharisee. They were super strict. As for zeal, I persecuted the church. When he was a Jew, he persecuted these people. That's how zealous he was. As for righteousness based on the wall, Paul was faultless. He can, he can brag about his boast in the mutilation of the flesh exceeds all these other guys, all these dogs. But whatever were gains to me, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. Christ alone. He considers those as lost because he's got something better. He's got Christ. What is more, I consider everything a loss because I know of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider all those things garbage. I'm going to stop right there. We're right in the middle of a thought. I agree. But hey, guys, this is getting good. Next very basic Bible, we're going to see Paul talking more about considering all garbage. If you would like to have more detailed teaching, if you would like to have more verse by verse, slower teaching where they explain it better, go uh, scroll down from the YouTube video. Got plenty of uh, links to other teachings. Just click on the link and go there. All right, guys, we'll see you on the next very basic Bible. Quick read.